chopping some burgers at halftime saying this game feels like it should be 28 to 3 in To the right side he goes. Incomplete at the goal line. We got ourselves Thursday night football, Bengals and Ravens. We actually finally get a good Thursday night game. Two divisional foes going at it. And it was looking pretty good for the Bengals at first. They were doing a good job holding back Lamar Jackson and the Ravens offense. Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow were doing their thing. And in the third quarter, they're up. 21-7, to however, Lamar Jackson, who's, I think, probably the MVP favorite right now, he didn't give up, the Ravens went on to score three straight touchdowns starting late in the third quarter and then into the fourth quarter for the Ravens to take the 28-21 to lead, and then Joe Burrow throws a bomb downfield to Jamar Chase for 70 yards and the touchdown to tie it at 28. Ravens charge down the field, and Rashad Bateman gets the touchdown to take the 35-28 to lead. And then the Bengals, they get the ball back. The Ravens defense commits a lot of penalties, and the Bengals are able to get all the way into scoring position. They get the touchdown to make it 34-35. to And instead of kicking the extra point and it potentially going to overtime or potentially Lamar Jackson going down the field and scoring uh, game-winning touchdown or getting the game-winning field goal. They decided to go for two. You know, I mean, to be fair, the Bengals' defense really wasn't doing their job in the second half, so they decided to go for two instead of kicking the extra point. And, yeah, the Bengals don't convert on the two-point conversion, so the Ravens win. Good job. And the Bengals, they continue to lose close games like this, so... uh yeah, the unfortunate Bengals fans. Very unfortunate. He hands this one off. And there's a fumble. Ball is loose on the opening possession of overtime. We got the Munich game in Germany between the Giants and the Panthers. You know what? You know what, Germany, you deserve this for World War II. I know us Americans bring that shit up all the time, but you know what? This is what you get. You get Giants versus Panthers. But um, it, it was an interesting game, I guess. Good game for the Panthers. They were actually up 10 to nothing going into the second half. You know, they, they were doing enough. But uh, the Giants in the fourth quarter, uh, Daniel Jones, he runs it in for a touchdown to make it 14 to 17. And then... The Giants get a field goal off to tie it at 17, and it goes into overtime. And yeah, the Giants get the ball in overtime. And what do the Giants do with the ball in overtime? Well, they decide to fumble it away. And the Panthers recover, kick the game-winning field goal to win it 20-17. to Panthers get their second straight win. You know what? Happy for them. Panthers have been... Uh, pretty shit lately, so, you know, they, they get their third win of the season. And the Giants continue to crumble and look like shit. Daniel Jones is definitely, uh, gonna be gone after this year. And Brian Dable, maybe he gets fired in midseason. It's not looking good for New York. Play fake. May has a man open. It's a touchdown for Jalen Polk. I have one thing to say and one thing only. Fire Eberflus. Fire him. Get rid of Shane Waldron, too, because the way this offense has been playing since the bye week has been atrocious. It's been pathetic, and honestly, the whole league should be laughing at the Chicago Bears right now. Caleb Williams, he isn't playing good, but to be fair to him, his receivers aren't really getting open. His offensive coordinator really isn't calling the best plays around him, and his offensive line is made out of toilet paper. He got sacked nine fucking times in this game. Um, and Yeah, I don't think the Bears are going to win another game for the rest of the year. They should have won against this pathetic Pats team. The Pats really aren't good. But the Pats defense, uh, they looked like the fucking 2000 Baltimore Ravens defense out there. And Drake May, you know, he had some good moments in this game, so I'll give him credit there. But, yeah, this was this was a pretty sad game to watch, especially me as a Bears fan. Like, I, I think 
watching this game has made me want to stop being a Bears fan and actually start doing something productive. Because, um, like, what what the fuck am I doing on Sunday? I'm not doing shit. I'm, I'm just watching terrible football. Yeah, there, here's Purdy looking to rip it. Oh, good catch. It throws Pearsall. Ricky Pearsall trying to beat his man in the end zone. And he is in. Touchdowns. We get a pretty good game here between the 49ers and the Buccaneers. Christian McCaffrey is making his season debut. He's been hurt for a while. And, yeah, the Buccaneers have been on a little bit of a slide. They've been losing a lot of games recently, and it has kind of partially to do with some of their injuries. But um, Buccaneers still have been pretty competitive in the games they have lost. And this was this was a pretty good game. The 49ers' offense looked really good in this game, and uh, the Buccaneers countered that. It was pretty much a back-and-forth game. Honestly, the, the 49ers probably should have won this game by a a lot more though, because Jake Moody missed some field goals. But um, it went down to the wire. The 49ers get down the field, and Jake Moody kicks the game-winning field goal for the 49ers, 23 to 20. And yeah, good win by the 49ers. This is a win they definitely need to stay competitive in the division, and uh, to hopefully win their division. And just like they they need to keep winning games. They've just been kind of mediocre. Right now, and getting Christian McCaffrey is going to help them uh, get better offensively. And, and the Buccaneers, yeah, um, Baker Mayfield is pretty good, but he can't do it by himself. Um, that, that's pretty much that. Um, yeah, sorry, Bucks fans. <laughs> Anything good in this world. You know, the Broncos were up 14-3 to at one point. Bo Nix was looking pretty good. Threw a couple of touchdown passes. One beauty to Cortland Sutton. And it, it kind of looked like shit. The Broncos might upset the Chiefs here. Uh, the Chiefs are able to get a touchdown before the half to make it 10-14. to And then the second half is pretty much all defense. The Chiefs defense was stopping the Broncos offense. Um, Broncos defense was stopping the Chiefs uh, offense. It, you know, both offenses were stalling out a lot. But um, despite that, the Chiefs were able to get two field goals off um, to make it 16-14. Uh, to 14. But the Broncos, at the end, they get down the field, they get into field goal position, and it's looking like yeah, the Chiefs are about to get their first loss of the season. This should be an easy field goal for the Broncos. But the Chiefs, they block the field goal from the Broncos. And the Chiefs take the 16-14 to win. So the Chiefs' bullshit is real. It might be destiny for them to finish the season undefeated. I don't know. But yeah, um, unfortunately, the Broncos couldn't get the win here. To the air, and he's picked off! Johnson, Johnson on the return, Johnson at the five, takes it in! Yeah, I don't think uh, Joe Flacco is the answer for the Colts, but you know, Anthony Richardson probably isn't either, but in the Colts, they lost to the Bills 30-20, to Joe Flacco threw three interceptions, one of them being a pick six, not a good game from Joe Flacco, but you know, it wasn't really a good game for Josh Allen either, you know, the Bills offense didn't even score a touchdown till late in the second quarter. Uh, but the, the Bills are, are a very well-rounded team. They ran the ball uh, pretty well in this game. They defended well. Josh Allen made some plays. He just didn't throw any touchdowns. And yeah, the Bills, they, they still got a pretty easy win here. And the, the Bills are still going to be a very tough team to beat, you know, uh, even with Josh Allen having some bad moments in this game. Third and long. Wilson floats it way upstairs. Williams, he's got it! Touchdown! What an entertaining game we have here. I wish I would have watched more of this game than the Bears game, but whatever. We get Pittsburgh and we get Washington. Two pretty good teams, two playoff caliber teams. This was more of a back-and-forth game. You know, Russell Wilson and the Steelers' offense were having their moments. Jane Daniels 
and the Commanders were having their moments. It was, yeah, a back-and-forth game. But in the third quarter, Washington went up 14-24. to They had most of the momentum late in the second quarter and early third quarter. But the Steelers, uh, they continued to fight. They got a touchdown. Washington responded with a field goal. And then in the fourth quarter, the Steelers' defense... Uh, did a good job not allowing Jane Daniels to do too much. And Pittsburgh, they get a touchdown to make it 28-27 to in the fourth quarter. Jane Daniels, he gets the ball late in the fourth quarter. And it was like fourth and nine. This was a pretty big uh, play in the game. It was fourth and nine. Jane Daniels uh, throws it to Zach Ertz. And um, the officials called it short of the line again, so the Pittsburgh Steelers end up winning it, but, um, it, honestly, that call probably could have gone either way, or could have gotten the, uh, the call in his favor there, and then the Commanders could have dropped down field a little bit and gotten the game-winning field goal. It's a pretty close game, and, it, yeah, um, Steelers, they might be better with Russell Wilson, it hurts to say as a Justin Fields fan, but I think they stick with Russell Wilson, and, and Jane Daniels, um, you didn't have any any touchdown passes or interceptions in this game, but he, he still played very well. And, uh, yeah, I wish Caleb Williams would have more games like Jane Daniels, but um, maybe I'm just asking for too much. Extra man comes from Minnesota. Jones launches end zone. Closest man is a Viking. It is picked up by Bynum. Yeah, the Vikings did not look like a 5-0 and team in this game. It, it was... Uh, a, a pretty, it was more of a defensive battle, I guess, would be the right way to describe this game. Um, it one touchdown and a bunch of field goals. Um, that's the best way to describe this game. As Sam Darnold finished the game with three interceptions. Definitely not Sam Darnold's best game. And uh, Mac Jones, he ran in a touchdown. Uh, for the only touchdown of the game, but he also threw two interceptions. So it's it's not like there were any good players on offense in this game. It was pretty dull. The Vikings got the twelve to seven win. Um, I, I will say, uh, good defense for the Vikings, and then uh, I guess pretty good defense for the Jaguars too. That's kind of weird to say. You know, the Jaguars defense has been Pretty ass all year, but you know they did a good job against the Vikings. On third down here, Carr steps up, looking long, even one. Valdez Scantling touchdown. Okay, so are the Falcons a good team or not? Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I mean, you know what? Good, good win for the Saints. You know they finally did the right thing and fired Dennis Allen. And the interim coach comes in, Darren Rizzi, I believe his name is. And yeah, the Saints end their seven-game losing streak and they get the twenty to seventeen win. But um, the Falcons, they they should have won this game. Like, yeah, uh, Marcus Valdez Scantling had a pretty pretty good game. Two touchdown catches, a hundred. Plus receiving yards, you know, Derek Carr did his thing. But, like, the Falcons outgained the Saints on offense. You know, Kirk Cousins had 300 passing yards. Bijan had a pretty good game. He had a touchdown. And so, yeah, the, the Falcons should have won this game. Uh, they had three missed field goals. They had three. So, if they, if they get those, they win this game, in my opinion. And yeah, I, this is this is a weird game. And they also fucked it up on uh, fourth and four, I believe it was, at the end of the game in Saints territory. You know, if they convert there, they could probably get in field goal range and tie it, and at least go to overtime. Uh, yeah, the the Falcons, there's just a lot of missed opportunities in this game. And like, it's not like the Saints even played that well. Like in the second half, they played pretty fucking shitty. They punted the ball on all their drives except for one in the second half. So, I, I whatever, whatever. Saints, you got you got the win, okay? Uh, that's all that matters. Coming up on the four-minute mark in the third quarter, 
Murray running that read option. Murray stutter stepping in. Touchdown. I guess the Cardinals are a good football team. I guess the Cardinals are good. Like, I, I think they could probably win the NFC West right now with how things are going. I mean, they're they're leading the division right now. Who knows if they slow down later. But they've been playing pretty good. The Cardinals have looked really good. Um, they beat up on the Bears last week, which really doesn't say a lot. But they didn't allow a touchdown against the Bears. And they do the same thing against the Jets, and then the Jets aren't really good offensively either, but they did beat the Texans last week, and the Texans are supposed to be a playoff team, so um, I think the Cardinals defense uh, is really, really good, having allowed a touchdown in two weeks. Kyler Murray is looking really good. He's kind of having an underrated season, in my opinion. He's looked really good, and J James Conner, probably one of the best running backs in the league, so like, there is a lot of things to compliment this Cardinals team on. I think Jonathan Gannon might have been the right hire. A lot of people were clowning on him when he first got hired, but I think I think he's doing a pretty good job with the Cardinals. And uh, let's talk about the Jets real quick. Yeah, the Jets, they weren't good defensively like they were last week against the Texans. And uh, yeah, the Jets offense, like I said, is pretty bad, even with Aaron Rodgers on there. And the, the Jets... The Jets are a jerk right now. Um, I, I, I don't, like, are they going to bring Rodgers back? I think it kind of depends on if he wants to retire or not. Like, this this Jets team, they are kind of fucked. Rodgers must get to the 8-yard line for a first. Herbert with time. Now he throws. End zone. Touchdown. Jim Harbaugh is the messiah for Chargers fans, all six of them. Yeah, I think Jim Harbaugh was... Definitely the right answer for the Chargers. The Chargers are now 6-3. and three. They've been playing pretty good defense. You know, Justin Herbert, he hasn't been, like, lighting up the world or anything, but he's playing really steady, and he's playing good fundamental football. So, I, I, I wish that's what the Bears had. I wish that's what the Bears, Bears had. I, I remember the rumors of Jim Harbaugh coming to Chicago. That probably would have never happened because of the McCaskies, but... uh. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh, uh, definitely the right choice for the Chargers, and they get the win over the Titans. And to give credit to the Titans, Will Levis did actually play. Uh, he didn't play like shit. Um, he threw a couple of touchdown passes, but like they just they weren't consistent enough on offense for them to beat the Chargers, and their defense was not good enough to stop the steady play of the Chargers' offense. So, like. I think that's probably a good way of uh, summarizing this game. Lance, back to Ferguson. He coughed it up. That was a football move. And Blankenship. With uh, Dak Prescott being out for the year, the Cowboys were already in a pretty bad shape going into this game, to say the least. But you know what? Uh, there was still a sliver of optimism for Cowboys fans, you know, they're playing Nick Sirianni, he, he's not the best head coach out there, and, uh, yeah, I, I, they, they had that at least going into the game, and, uh, that sliver of optimism was unwarranted, because, holy fuck, the Eagles did whatever the fuck they wanted, Jalen Hurts shit all over this terrible Cowboys defense, <laughs> and, the offense for the Cowboys uh, did not fare much better. Um, 146 yards of total offense. Cooper Rush uh, was not doing it. The Cowboys fumbled the ball four times. Four fucking times. Trey Lance came in and he looked equally as shit to Cooper Rush. So I really don't think uh, there's much of a quarterback battle over there in uh, Dallas right now. Uh, C.D. Lamb also dropped a touchdown in this game. Uh, that got a lot of coverage because I guess the sun was in his eyes. And uh, yeah, AT&T uh, Stadium. I don't think I don't think Jerry Boy really thought it out when uh, uh, getting the blueprints together because the sun has caused many issues uh, at uh, AT&T Stadium. So. Um, even if C.D. Lamb does catch that fucking touchdown, too, they lose. So, um, I don't know why everyone's fucking talking about it. But, yeah, um, Cowboys are fucked. Um, 
And uh, a lot of people are mad at Jerry Jones, and rightfully so. Uh, but, I mean, Cowboys fans have been pissed off at Jerry Jones forever now, so it really doesn't make much of a fucking difference. For 52 for the win! It is just good! Just inside the upright! Ooh, it was looking pretty bad for the Detroit Lions at first in this game. They were down 23-7 to the Houston Texans. Uh... C.J. Stroud was looking pretty good. The Texans' offense was taking advantage of the Detroit turnovers. Jared Goff was throwing a lot of interceptions uh, going into the second half. Up to this point, Jared Goff had three interceptions. Two of them got deflected, so I guess it really wasn't 100% on Jared Goff. And then one was a uh, Hail Mary that got intercepted. And then to start the second half, um, C.J. Stroud, he decides to get in on the turnover party and throws an interception. And Jared Goff, he feels a little generous, throw, so uh, he throws an interception right back. But um, the Texans really weren't doing anything with that. CJ Stroud threw another interception, and then Jared Goff responded with another interception. And unlike the first half, the Texans weren't uh, scoring on those turnovers. They uh, were uh, punting. They really weren't, you know, doing anything with it. So uh, Detroit was able to get back into this game in the fourth quarter the lions come alive they make it a one possession game 20 to 23 they tie it with a field goal late in the fourth quarter and then uh the texans it seems like they had the opportunity to kick a field goal to take the 26 23 lead but the texans kicker fairbairn he missed it which gave the Lions great field position. They go down the field. Jake Bates kicks the game-winning field goal for the Lions, 26-23. Yeah, it was a pretty entertaining Sunday night football game. The Lions came back. And, uh, yeah, the Lions are still a really good football team. Uh, just next time, not five interceptions. No more of those. And uh, I think the Lions will win games more comfortably this was a really entertaining game though and yeah the texans choked this one away here is a toss and on the run into the end zone diving malik washington and then we end the week with dolphins versus rams which is just kind of a eh matchup and this was this was an odd game the, the dolphins won uh spoiler alert um but it, it was close, but it never really felt like the Rams had much momentum in this game. It always kind of felt like the Dolphins were in control. You know, the Dolphins' defense played pretty good in this game. They've looked like ass all year, and they finally uh, did something. I think that's kind of the story of the day, is that Dolphins' defense didn't allow a single Rams touchdown. And their offense um, has been kind of explosive the last few weeks. So um, that is pretty good for uh, the defense. Not so good for the Rams offense. I mean, uh, the Rams offense, they're getting it down between the 20s, but when it came to the red zone, not fucking much. And uh, yeah, the defense for the Dolphins uh, also had an interception and a fumble recovery. So props to the Dolphins defense. I'll give them credit there. And I, I guess I'll give a little bit of credit to the Dolphins offense as well. You know, Tiger Kill had a touchdown this game. It's been a while. <laughs> been a while since we saw any life at all out of the uh, Dolphins offense. And this, this, this is a weird game. Uh, first and third quarters were the only quarters with a touchdown. Um, both touchdowns uh, coming from the Dolphins. The Rams didn't do anything in the first and third quarter. And then the second and fourth quarters were just field goal fest. Just all field goals. So if you love field goals, holy shit, um, this is uh, the game you want to watch. Just skip the first and third quarters. So, um yeah, odd game. Pretty odd game where the Dolphins won, and it looked closer than what it actually was. Oh! Blocked! The Chiefs have won! The Chiefs have won!